In the ancient past, fallen angels were cast to the earth and lived amongst humans and even had relationships with them. In this video, we will look at three concepts of a type of language between fallen angels and human beings. The three concepts that we will look at is the Enochian language, unciphered text and hieroglyphs, and megalithic sites. In the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, it lays the foundation for the concept of these angels on the earth. And it reads, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The first concept that we will look at is the Enochian language. The widespread understanding of the Enochian language come from John D. and Edward Kelly. John D. was a mathematician, an astronomer, a teacher, an occultist, and an alchemist. He was said to be an intense Christian, but through his study of religion and spirituality and the times that he lived in, led him to search out spiritual matters in all ways that he possibly could. John Dee was an advisor to Queen Elizabeth I, and she relied upon him heavily for guidance. As John Dee combined science and spiritualism to rise to the high rankings of the Elizabethan politics, in his letters to Queen Elizabeth, he would sign them 007, which later was used to influence the movie's James Bond. As the story goes, one day John Dee was in a long, intense prayer when all of a sudden the angel Uriel showed up and gave John a crystal the size of an egg. Uriel said through looking into the crystal, he could contact angels. But after weeks and weeks of trying to look into the crystal under the guidelines of Uriel's directions, John Dee had no success. Until one day a man came up and introduced himself. This man was Edward Kelly. Edward Kelly was an English Renaissance occultist and scryer. Depictions of Edward Kelly show him wearing a hat because it said his ears were cropped, a punishment that was known to be given to people caught in forgery. When John Dee told Edward Kelly about the stone and the interaction with Uriel, John was shocked when Edward Kelly was the first person to be able to look into the stone and actually get a message from an angel through it. This process of looking into a stone or a reflective surface for messages from the other side or the spirit realm is known as scrying. John Dee and Edward Kelly would scry for hours every single day. Here is actually John Dee's obsidian mirror that was used for scrying sessions. This is in the British Museum. And here's another one of John Dee's items that he called the Seal of God. This item was used for the stone or mirror to be placed on to see and talk to the angels. From 1581 to 1585, John Dee and Edward Kelly began performing long series of these spiritual methods to contact the angels. At the age of 54, Dee wrote in his personal journal that God had sent, quote, good angels to communicate directly with mankind. Hundreds of these spiritual conversations were recorded in his journals. During these sessions is where they gained the knowledge of what they called the Enochian language. And actually, John Dee himself never described the language as Enochian. That's what it has grown to be known as through the years. But he referred to it as angelical or the celestial speech, the first language of God slash Christ, or particularly Adamical. That's because he asserted that it was used by Adam in the Garden of Eden to name all of God's creatures. Dee and Edwards came to believe that this was the primordial language or the first language ever, and actually the language of angels and the language they would use to communicate with God. Through these sessions was given to them the Enochian alphabet. The script is written from right to left and may include accents. The Enochian letters have English letter equivalents with some of the letters names pronounced as they would be in English, but many are pronounced differently. They are given in the original Enochian language in a modern English translation based on John Dee's old English versions. Now, while it's said John Dee was an intense Christian, the state of the world and the society of the time somehow didn't show to these men that what they were doing was a wrong spiritual practice. During the end of their time together, Edward Kelly heard in one of his spiritual interactions that him and John Dee were supposed to share their wives with each other. John Dee was confounded and not happy with this, but then the men together went into another one of their seance scryer sessions, and the angel confirmed to the both of them that this was something that they should do. 
The diary of John D. said that he was in great amazement and grief as he did not want to have to share his wife with Edward Kelly. On the 21st of May, 1587, D. confirmed that the wife share had taken place with just two words in Latin in his diary, Pactum Factum, or Pact Fulfilled. After this event, things were not the same between D. and Kelly. Around this time, both men went their separate ways. John Kelly went back to his home in England and when he arrived, to his surprise, he found his house and his beloved library and estates in ruins. Edward Kelly, while for a short period of time, rose to prominence in the Bohemian Assembly and was granted Czech citizenship where he could own property, but things didn't stay too good for him too long, where he ended up spending time with bad company, caught up in debts, and lost favor with the emperor and ended up in debtor's prison. Isaiah 8.19 says, And when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? Galatians 1, 8 verse 9 gives us more wisdom into this topic and says, But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. While the Enochian language is a somewhat modern version of a claimed connection of a language between fallen angels and humankind, in my opinion, there are ancient connections to this in a few ways. One of those ways is unciphered languages and hieroglyphs. Revelation 12, 9 and Genesis 6, 4, as well as other verses, tell us that fallen angels interacted with human beings. The languages of these ancient cultures that have not yet been deciphered, I believe, could document the history of that. A few examples of undeciphered writing systems are the Indus script, also known as the Herpan script, is a corpus of symbols produced by the Indus Valley Civilization. This is said to be between 3300 and 1900 BC. The Olmec hieroglyphs designate a possible system of writing or proto-writing, writing with pictures developed within the Olmec culture. This is said to be around 600 BC, possibly the oldest Mesoamerican script. Rongo Rongo is a system of glyphs discovered in the 19th century on Rapa Nui that appears to be writing or proto-writing. Rapa Nui is also known as Easter Island. Hieroglyphs tell a story. The same way I can show you these meme sequences and you understand what I'm saying is the same thing these hieroglyphs once did for the people of that region. Here are a few hieroglyphs and petroglyphs showing the offspring of fallen angels, their giant Nephilim children. We see these in Egypt, Assyria, Algeria, Chile, and Native America, to name a few. Cities today are statements of art and architectural intelligence. Ancient building sites with huge stones or megalithic sites are the same thing. The builders of these ancient sites could have used smaller stones, which of course would have been easier, but the use of impossible sized stones sends a message and makes a profound statement about who the builder is and their knowledge and strength. A few examples of this in the ancient past are Baalbek in Lebanon, Egypt, and Peru, specifically Cusco, Sacsayhuaman, and Alante Tambo. The Bible reveals to us that fallen angels in fact were in contact with human beings in the past. John Dee and Edward Kelly believed that they were in contact with angels, but I would argue that these men were in contact with fallen angels. They may not have understood at the time because of the culture and whatever the understanding of that day was of spiritual activity and alchemy, but through the process of contacting these quote angels and them telling them to sin through the process of swapping wives should have told them, especially John Dee, who was said to have been a devout Christian, that these angels were not sent from God. A true angel of God would never lead anyone to sin. These different historical sources support the biblical narrative all the way back to the book of Genesis of fallen angels in the earth. While Satan and his fallen angels have tried and still do try to corrupt the lies and the mindsets of mankind, we can know that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. The passage following in Revelation 12 after Satan and his angels were cast out reads as follows. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. 
Let me know what you think in the comments about fallen angels and the language that they have between humans and amongst themselves. Did they leave evidence of this language behind? Can we look back at history and see this language? I hope and pray you all are well. Let me know your opinions on all this in the comments. Thanks for watching and God bless.